keep an eye on that camouflage every two minutes. And of course, 100 points to win here on Strongholds. We're going to start off with Shotzi from Splice and see if he can pick up the kills he was in the first series. And the key for me, I think everyone watching at home and in the room with us here in London knows that we need to make sure if you're on the side of Tox, do not be the first one to take tons and tons of damage, right? Make sure that you're getting the upper hand early in these battles. Do not fall victim and, and, and allow the, the 3v2s, the 4v2s to continue happening over and over and over again. That's how they lost that first series. And the first camo, I believe, was burnt by a Frosty. We're on board with Lethal, though. Didn't have too many standout plays in that first series. He'll be looking to turn this one around. And early on here, huge for Tox. First team in control of the map. Now can they get established on the map? Can they get a little bit of a lead and just breathe some confidence back into themselves? That's right, that camo, right, by the way, was right away, right around 51. So we'll be on the lookout for that, right around that 9 to 51 mark here. But early lead here for Tox, which is good to see because as we talked about in the last series, we didn't really see Tox leading ever in the series. There were very few moments where they had to lead and they were at early point in the game. They were playing catch up the entire series and as Elamite and Lethal were talking about on the desk, it's so hard to do that period in competitive Halo, let alone against the best team in the world. Tox simply needs to apply the pressure every single game and not let up. And look at the survivability here of Stella. He's doing such a good job of buying time for his team. One thing that Tox needs to improve on tenfold from that first series is making sure when there's one or two players left alive from Splice, they have to clean those kills up quicker. Absolutely. You see Splice do it every time, right? Every single time. That's a great example right here. Look at Snakebite flying across. Picks up the double. The assist comes in as well. That's the kind of play we need to see from Tox. Play a few steps faster. Play a little bit earlier on these pushes. It'll really pay dividends in the second best assist. And look at it. It's turned into points here for Tox. Snakebite flying across the map, putting the pressure onto the respawners. He doesn't have to win the battle. He just has to do damage to allow his teammates to move up. Finish off those kills. Snakebite playing that one beautifully. Camel's in 10 seconds, by the way. It's a trip cap here for Tox. So if they're able to put together another string of kills, they might be able to continue scoring as well as grab this camo, which is coming up right now on your screen. Yeah, this should be a camo potentially going into the hands of Splice, though, because they picked up two or three kills, and it is Shotzi who's going to drop down bottom middle after picking that one up. Splice also worryingly for Tox here, as well as having the camouflage. They've got control of two strongholds, and now they're probably going to have a triple cap of their own. And look at them doing so well. You just saw Shotzi. He's up top mid. He's even challenging Cafe Flowers while he's up there for the camo. The second it pops up, he drops down. Eventually he will fall, but it led to a trip cap for Splice. Yeah, I want to stay on board with Snakebite for a bit here because he seems to be the player who really is looking to take the fight here to the guys on Splice. He's coming under fire, but doing a lot of damage every single time we're on board with him. He's currently in the respawn spring. Let's stay. I was wanted to stay with him, but we'll stay with Lethal actually. We'll go back to Snakebite just to see what he can do, because he's the, he seems to be the player that's moving around the map fastest here. And I think Snakebite, uh, really any player on Tox, but Snakebite perhaps has no one better to do it, to take charge, be that first player in, do not be afraid to be the aggressor, and know that your teammates will follow. Tox is a team that can play real quick, as long as they're on the same page, they can bring this same playstyle to Splice, as long as they move together as a unit, but we've seen Splice just really outclassing Tox all series so far. Stana picks up the kill there on Snakebite. Let's move on from some Snakebite POV. Let's see what everyone else in the game is doing. Lethal now from Tox as Splice have established a lead. 36 to 25, but at least it's a lot tighter here. This is the worrying moment though for Tox. We see three players fall across the board. Splice have been so good when they've had control. The first time they've got a three or four dead, they seem to just extend a lead, whether it's in Slayer, Strongholds, Capture the Flag, it doesn't matter. Big plays there from Snakebite. Here's just what we said, right? He goes up to S4 and he makes sure to clear out Nest, preventing the trip cap. Also, Camel's in about 25 seconds. Now they're collapsing on bottom middle. This is the kind of counters that we need to see from Tox. They're down by a bit here, but they're still playing the way they need to be if they want to win this game. Let's see what Tox's communication is like. They've got a long way to go to take this grand final. Let's see what the comms are like. Let's jump in. Stay alive, guys. 47 yeah, Camel. Not exact, not exact. Absolute Camel's not exact. Right, yeah, top top one hand or one hitter. Not exact, 47. Let's right, keep eyes on it. Get eyes on it. It could be up any second now. Blast. It's LR, LR. Uh, it. Yeah, camo guys. Yard yard yard. Shot, Eco. Nice. We got it. We got it. Good shit. I traded yard beer. Absolutely. Eco, right side loop. Right side loop. What's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? Absolute tram. Eco. They're all spawning tram. They're all four tram. I got him at. Nice shot, Matt. All four tram and yard. There's one blue. We should push. Yeah, maybe we should push. Push it three. Push it three. I see yard. I see yard. Literally pushing. Push it. Push it. One tram. He's on me. He's There's two. There's two on TJ. There's two. Nice. Last guy. One was driving. He might have shot. I saw cafe. I saw cafe. Go. LR one it. LR one it. LR. I'm looking. I'm looking. I see Ness. I see Ness, guys. Matthew wants to push Ness. I see Ness. One second. One's absolute. Two absolute. Two absolute. All absolute. All absolute. One Ness ramp. One went Ness ramp. Yo, can we call the yard? Come here. Yeah, I'm in. I hold. 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 I h
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, in top yellow, they're going yard. Yo, drive by already. I need help. Go in S right away. I killed them. I tried with one. Drive in yard, in yard. Player life, maybe? Um, yep, bottom close. One close, one in shot. Soda on me. 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 Soda on Hey, stay up here, guys. I need help. Hotel, top yellow. Hotel, hotel. Two drop market. Two drop market. Yep. Looking. Yeah. Two here. I'm one shot. One's a two. Bottom of it. Hey, pushing me close. Half shields closed. Right again. Market bottom closed. Stay up here. We're kind of dying. Try to live in blue. Two, three, and bottom. Don't worry about nest. Yeah. Back go yard, man. If you can. Then you. He's market. Market's gonna drop top yellow probably. Yeah. One shot LR. One shot. Yeah. I can't get him. One shot. Top dip. Top dip. Top dip. Running. Kill me dead. I see. I see on your window. I see window. I see blue. I see blue. I can maybe kill him. He's absolutely still in there. Top yellow. Top yellow. Two shot. Forty-three. Nice, Matthew. Forty-three. Two shot. Guys, push out. I'm gonna start bottom. Forty-three cam. Oh guys, 43. You're gonna be pushers. Right, he's gonna drop on you guys. He's gonna drop on you guys. I need help. I'm here. Glass, glass, close one. Yeah, guys. Bottom close. I have glass. Glass sweep. Ready to item. He's three. Yeah, three. It's in going drive. Okay. 43. Yeah, guys. We got two. Yeah, blue truck on me. Blue truck, blue truck on me. Okay. Camo, okay. camo guys. 43. Can we look camo? Oh, camo's up, guys. Yeah, I can get it. I can get it. Okay. Okay. Five four. Five four. Top dip going for it. On it. Yep. He's gonna. Ice. Third, third, okay. I'm in, oh I'm shit, in. good job. Go on top, yellow. Yeah, top mid run. He fell close. I'm trying to sell her. I'm trying to sell her. Nice turn, nice turn, nice turn, path. Still one shot close, guys. I'm gonna shoot us, shoot us, shoot us, shoot us, shoot us. One dead, one dead. This is gonna be a nest. Dip and blue ramp, dip and blue ramp. One nest, two nest, two nest. Last two were dip and blue ramp. One side bottom, go bottom. Watch truck, truck, truck. Yeah, watch it. Yeah, there's already a guy bottom. Matt truck, Matt truck, where is he? Well, I mean, the comms were absolutely perfect almost for them for Tox, but one player who is not so much the player, the coach here stood behind Tox. He's doing a huge job for them. A huge job, and this is the new Tox. This is the Tox we were hoping to see in the second best of seven. They are leading in this game, they are controlling the pace of the game got to point out a few big things from their coach world one you heard on the second to last camo he said camo's 47 not exact that's very specific making sure his team knows that it's around the 47 mark on the timer but he didn't have the exact time sure enough it was actually only about one second off and then that allowed his team to get control you heard on the later camo camo's 44 44 exact can we get there that led to frosty pushing in and gets the clean camo right world one is on them we need to get this camo can we look camo it has given them a great lead here and they're a point to take game number one. And one thing that's really interesting about Roy Royal 2 has done here, he didn't step into that stronghold. At the moment, they have no idea that he's behind enemy lines here, but it doesn't matter because Frosty is picking up kills of his own, and now Tox are just eight points away from taking the first game in our bracket reset. What a strong run from them here, as it looks like a totally different game. Keep in mind, when that listen and started, they Four were tripped dead, on. Four dead here for Tox, just as we're praising them. Splice, they turn it around again. This could be a triple cap here for Splice. Look at this now. That's a big, big kill though from Frosty to make sure that they gain a man advantage for a slight second here. Next camo's in 20, which could be a big factor, but it's a trip cap for Splice. Frosty gets the first kill though, that's important. Lethal gets taken down himself. You can see a player, no shield, bottom middle, and it looks like they're committing to this battle. Bottom middle here, Splice, they want to try and delay. They get the reset, so that player gets taken out. Big decisions made by Splice there, and they paid off beautifully. Next camo now, not sure if Eco knows, you have to assume, but actually he leaves it for Renegade. Renegade's gonna be the one to come away with camo, but stellar season there on screen. And it's Frosty who he goes up against, and that's a huge win. Frosty had the first shot in that battle. Renegade managed to win it out. Now you're gonna see him being possessed position to contest this bottom mid stronghold gets the beat down but no royal two comes up huge again big big kill here take a look now we have two dead for each side the contestion all players inside bottom mid here who's gonna win it top's turning around they should be able to close this out doesn't look like any other resets are in position here one point to go yes indeed tox is alive the first win for in the grand finals they go up one to zero absolutely huge for tox getting back into this series one to zero, they go up. They had to fight, they had to claw. But they've shown that they can match Splice when they play at the speed they need to. I need to give so much praise to Snakebite and Frosty in that game. They were putting it, the aggression to Splice. Royal 2 doing a fantastic job of, of making sure he was cleaning up those kills as well. But Lethal, little plays like that towards the end. The contestion on bottom middle. You can, they don't show up in the stats. We talk about it so much. Everyone doing a great job there for Tox. 18, 10, and 10 from Royal 2. Standout performance there without a doubt. Big numbers from him. One thing I got to point out, though, you just saw it. Look at the lack of emotion on Tox after they win that game one, right? They know that they, they deserve to be here. They're sick of losing to Splice. And barely any celebration on their side of the stage after winning game number one. They mean business.
Here we go then, second map loading up in the background. And Addy, I want to talk about you to talk about how important the opening strategy is on Coliseum Slayer. I mean, Coliseum Slayer, of course, is hugely important because you're going to lose both power weapons if you play that wrong. But I want to also bring it back to the analyst desk. What they're talking about, we need to see really strong open and middle games from Tox because as soon as they start losing, like Elamite said, when they're down 23 to 7, how could you cobble back together a win? But here we are, game number two, Slayer on Coliseum. Tox wants to close this one out here as well. Opening strategy, absolutely vital. Is Frosty, who's going to be moving towards the rocket. Snakebite, moving towards the silver. Keep an eye on that kill feed because every kill at the start of this game, every death can swing the entirety of this map. It's indeed, a, a team's trading right here, one-to-one -one off the break as really trying to feel each other out and get a hold of those two power weapons. Nothing picked up just yet. Shotzi, though, did grab the sniper rifle and Royal 2 with the rocket launcher. And Stella picks up a triple kill. He doesn't matter if you have the weapons. He's going to put the pistol to use. Splice with a great start here. Now they have the security of both the rocket launcher and, of course, the sniper rifle. Yes, indeed. A comfortable lead, a big opening, but that triple from Stellar. Uh, we talked about right, openings, how important they are. If you have a player on your team getting a triple kill, it's going to secure you both weapons as long as you play it right. And Shotzi now putting that sniper rifle to use as well. And this is the difficult thing for Toxie. You know, they've got to fight for oh, us. Have range. And when Shotzi has the sniper rifle, as soon as he picks off one kill, he's moving around the map, making himself unpredictable. By the time that he was called out there by the player that he killed, he was in a different position. Completely different position. Also gets a stick to deny that immediate sniper grab as well. So a teammate's probably going to fly in there to pick that up as Renegade has the rockets as well. But, I mean, he looks like an acrobat. He's flying around, sitting on top of the flag bridge for a split second to challenge the next rocket corner. That's what they're so good at is rotating and Toxie to make sure they don't let this 11 to 7 deficit become even more. They need to just play this slow, get the first kills, make sure you're not simply giving Splice a bigger and bigger lead here because it'll be so hard to come back. We already saw that in a Slayer. Oh, and Snake Bite's coming to life a little bit here. A double kill from him. He put those bullets that he found on the floor to use. Toxie doing a good job of actually keeping this one close considering that they haven't had the weapons. And again, it's PJ Snake Bite who's leading the charge. Great confidence from him as he's able to get back there, finish that kill and grass, picks up another kill as well. They're right back in this. This is what you want to see if you're a Tox fan. They do not just sit back in the bases. They fly back out and now the game is within three. They say they have to be decisive to beat Splice. And you can see why every time they are and they don't second guess themselves, they're getting into positions to finish off the kills. Four kills between the two teams. You can see Snakebite's gonna move up and get that next rocket launcher as well. So good job again from Royal One, making sure he's yep. positioning the players around the map and making them aware of that. And disregard Royal 2's death there on the rocket bridge. You just saw Royal 2 fall there because he was getting double teamed on that rocket bridge. He was there very intentionally. He was there so that they could come away with the rockets. That's a death you give up in favor of that rocket grab. As long as you can put the two rockets to use. Certainly. As long as you can put them to use. And I two potential kills here, Andy. But at this level, you always expect them to put them to use. And ideally even more than that, right? A rocket launcher with two rockets is not just there so that you can pick up those two kills. The trade it's a very smart play from Shotzi to force that rocket trade but ideally when you grab those rockets you not only get two kills from them you also get a setup that's going to set you up for success for even more kills as well 18 to 7 one kill between the two teams Stella is met by Frosty flying across the silver at him Frosty manages to get away with his life importantly as well sniper rifle about to pop up renegade and eco pick up a couple of kills so now we have a 2v4 on the map and that should secure the snipe side of the map and, of course, that sniper rifle potentially as well. And we got to say it again. This is a very different series from our first best of seven. These two teams so close at the midpoint. We very rarely saw this in our first set of seven that these two teams were this close. And here we are now, only three kills separating these two squads. And this was mess Mr. First Series. Stella was absolutely unbelievable for Splice. Eco said it himself. Keep an eye out for him. But now, in our second best of seven, Snakebite has been the highlight player for me. He seems to just be the one really wanted to prove a point, to be honest with you. You should have an easy kill here. Onto that player, Stella with the sniper rifle, was trying to get away. Almost expected that player to bait him out. Again, Jeez. Snakebite showing no fear, but one player who's showing absolutely no respect is Stella, who just jumped straight back out with the sniper rifle, had it in the back pocket and used the pistol, but now he's in a position to try and potentially pick off the respawns. And look at him constantly rotating, right? Flies over to flag, checks flag. Now he flies over here, back to the sniper side of the map, just consistently rotating with that sniper rifle. The second he doesn't have an angle, he refreshes, gets a new angle, and it's so hard to track the sniper on the opponent team if they're doing it. There's three players from Tox currently in the snipe side of the map. You can see Stella's pushing up. He has no fear whatsoever. He hits the body shot, cleans it up, and now Stella! Here's the headshot as well onto Frosty. Another player's gonna be in front of him! B, stop it! That's a triple kill, and that's gonna give a huge lead here to Splice. Absolutely fearless, flying around with this sniper rifle and doing damage. It's giving them a comfortable lead, like you said. 
That thing's gonna be out of ammo. We'll wait for the next weapon, but Shotzi also having one rocket to boot as well. And this is another time where Tox needs to make sure they don't give up too many kills. They can afford to exchange just a few here, but do not let Splice get three, four in a row. It'll be so hard to come back if they do. It'll give Splice such a cushion for the last 10 kills of the game. I don't remember, apart from a double no-scope coming in from Snake Snakebite at the start where he picked up a sniper rifle with a couple of bullets and them having control of that sniper. It seems to be the difference between the two teams at the moment. Splice have done a better job of controlling that weapon. Stella now moving under the base. Just 14 kills to go here. The game is close, but it's starting to see that gap appear yes. again here, Andy. It really is. This game was just within two. Now it's a six-kill game. And what's wild is the game was so close when Stellar had the confidence to go on that sniping spree to pick up those kills. And that's really what's given them this five-kill lead. But Tox is not giving up just yet. It's still 37-32. Frosty's doing a great job of staying alive here. Somehow, oh. where is he? Oh, my word, Frosty. Does finally get taken out and immediately the attention turned by Shotzi there across map. What those pistol shots are difficult to hit from corner to window. Such incredible accuracy as Royal 2's moving in bottom mid now. He's gonna be on a killing spree. That was yep. three in a row, cleaning out the snipe side. Five kills the difference between these I two teams. I was just about to say the next few kills are gonna be so important. It still applies to this sequence as well. Depending on which way this goes, this is gonna decide if this is a close match through the 40s or if Splice pulls away. Tox needs to be very careful with these next few engagements. Shotzi's all about this rocket launcher right now. You can see it's going to be spawning pretty quickly. Frosty and Lethal pick up big kills using those grenades, both the plasma and the frag grenade effectively. Surprised not to see any pressure actually on Shotzi here because they picked up two kills. Oh, and look no. at that, not calling that out, not being aware of Shotzi's position. That means those two kills have just been cancelled out. Sniper has been picked up as well as and we there's take the rockets across, to splice. And the rockets now in hands. Still a three kill game, but Frosty does have the sniper rifle. So both oh, power weapons word. seeing other sides of the stage. Two kill game here. Frosty needs to be careful because you know Shotzi's going to be coming for him with those rockets. But Shotzi that's a big actually trade. taken down off screen. One kill game here. That's a big trade coming in from Snake right there. A one for one with the rocket launcher. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. One kill between the two teams, and this is the first time Tox have had control of the snipe, and Royal 2, he's picking up kills with the pistol as well. Tied at 45, three shots left in this sniper rifle as well. Now There's the lead to four Tox. kills to go. Here we go. Right now, Frosty could end this game if he connects on these headshots. Another kill hits a snake bite. Stella picks one up of his own. One kill between the two teams. The beatdown comes in. Stella picks up a double, though. Still just the one kill lead. Here's the body shot. Tries to challenge it. You can see there's another player on the fountain. Renegade has no idea he's there, but they can't finish the kill. And in the meantime, Eco gets one of his own. No, they've left those two kills unattended. That was the game there. If they had finished those two kills, 48, 48, two kills to go for each team. He's having to back up here. The pressure is coming in from Splice. They're being relentless. Two kills. He has the game in his hands. Can't finish the kill off though. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, 49, 48. Charges in. 49, 49 on set. Who's gonna win this game? One kill between these two teams. Royal 2's shields are dropped. Another player here in. The plasma grenades, Lethal's looking for it as well. PJ's making the push. It looks like it's Snake Bite, but it's Lethal who gets the final kill. Tox go up two to zero. What a big moment for them. You wouldn't be able to tell by the looks on their faces here, but 50 to 49 is the final score. Woo. Series could have been tied one to one, but instead Tox goes up two to zero in our second best of seven. These two teams could not be closer. What a different series this has been on set. What a difference a reset makes. We saw it in New Orleans. We're seeing it here in London. The crowd enjoyed that one. I think they enjoyed it when, it, when the game was actually over. I think there was a few people in the crowd at 49 all who were having heart palpitations. But I mean, I look at the stats. I mean, 16 and 12 from Royal 2. I mean, lethal, eight, seven and nine. But who cares when you get that 50th kill? That's, That's the it. best feeling you can have in Halo. Shotzi, though, 17 and 8. Talked about earlier in the game how he is performing. Line. Big numbers from him, but it's not enough. 50 to 49, and that's a tough loss for Splice. Keep in mind, these guys have not lost a tournament in four events. They don't know what it's like to lose. One thing we mentioned before this series started is how important that winner's bracket win was for Tox. This is exactly why. They get two shots at Splice. They get two opportunities. Oddball Fissure on next map. Splice have looked pretty strong on this one, we have to say. But Tox did beat them back in that Grand Finals of New Orleans on this game time. They did here. We're getting right into game number three immediately. And one thing Tox can, needs to be sure of, that they do not get ahead of themselves. We've seen Splice 4-0 Tox so many times, and it's entirely possible in this series as well. We're getting into that game right now. Game number three, Oddball on Fisher. Here we go then. Keep an eye on that overshield to start things off as well. Gonna start this one off with the point of view of Renegade. Moving straight towards top middle. 
Frosty yeah. is actually going to pick up the overshield early on, Andy. Yeah, going to be an early grab for Frosty, and he's got about a quarter of overshield left, but just as I say that, it drops down just a bit. He's been able to stay alive, but my oh my, Toxic's got to be feeling good. they got to be feeling confident. As we said, they cannot get ahead of themselves, but if you look at where we were last year, last best of seven, and you, we know how Splice has dismantled Tox time and time again, tournament after tournament, even when Tox looks so strong, Tox needs to make sure they keep this up if they want to close this out. But on the other side, you know Splice is not going to go down without a fight. Absolutely not. Two players challenging Frosty. Frosty a little bit overzealous maybe there. Didn't need to challenge that kill. Could have played his life a little bit longer, but a great start here from Snakebite and Tox. No play ball. 17 to 0. Doesn't quite get that ball off the map. Uh, you saw him going to that railing. He wanted to get the play ball, of course. Uh, for those of you perhaps new to this uh, oddball game type or new to Halo 5, throwing that ball off the map is going to reset it when you're holding this ball. A little bit of a game of keep away. And whenever you reset it to bottom middle, it gives everyone a little bit of time to get control of the map once again instead of giving your opponent the ball in that exact power position where you were holding it. And tiny little misplay like that. Look at the score. Tox had a great start here. Now it's going to be Splice going into the lead as we have Andy B Styles with the tweet coming in. Cracking championship Sunday here watching the London HS finals. Great show. Let's go. Thanks to these two teams for providing us with this incredible entertainment. I was going to say, Tox really waking up here. And uh, if you were hoping for some great, great Halo 5 action here in our second best of seven, you've come to the right place because this series looks so different from our first best of seven, where if you're just joining us, Splice sent uh, Tox to the loser's bracket with a very convincing 4 0 victory. That's why we're here in this second best of seven. I think Royal 2 fancied that battle too much. He disappeared off the map pretty sharpish. Frosty picks up a kill of his own, though. The shield's going to be popping pretty soon as well. But, I mean, Splice doing a great job here of just keeping that ball away. But now we have the setup. Now we have exactly where you want to be positioned on the map here for Tox. They get the first kill as well. Lethal with five perfect shots to take out Stella. Not only is that going to allow Frosty to move in on that overshield, it means that ball time is all going to be going to Tox. Oh, no, look at that nade. Taking down two players, that is going to be a splice overshield, which is a big, big grab. They had three players down bottom middle. They lost all three of them due to some really well-placed grenades. Great job there from Wonderboy in the back there to get that uh, observation of exactly how that went down bottom middle. And that sure as he won as well. Some fantastic work from our team. I think that's a big mis miscommunication coming in from Tox there. Three players caught inside bottom middle. You don't need three players down there. A couple, I understand. But, I mean, one grenade should not be taking out three weak players from Shotzi. He should not be able to move in, pick up that overshield without really having to do too much. Now he has the oppo and Splice, more importantly, have the lead. And it's pretty rare you see bottom mid cleared out in the fashion that it was with those grenades, right? But unfortunately, Tox actually had two players that were right within that grenade radius. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication on who was actually grabbing grabbing it, but it's given Splice uh, once again uh, the lead in this game. However, some good time from Tox as well. Yeah, nice setup as well. They have control of the blue side of the map. You're going to see the ball carry and the player next to him are going to be controlling this plat. Watching top middle, watching the jump up. They're trying to do so, but Eco with a big double kill here is going to open the map. But Snakebite, the two kills of his means that at least Splice won't be able to push across and pick up that ball immediately. Checking in on the kills category here in this game on set 26 to 22 in favor of Tox. So once again, not only leading on the scoreboard, uh, but also leading in the kills category, which is a big difference from the first series because we saw them out slaying, but not necessarily winning in objective as well. Renegade with the beat down there. Takes down Royal 2. Very cagey affair at the moment. Seeing these two teams here on Fissure. Now Shotzi picks up a kill. Renegade immediately turns the attention to the oddball. If he can sneak into the window here, he might be able to get away, but Frosty chases down those kills. A big push coming in top mid here from Tox as well, but it looks like Splice are going to shut this one down. Yep, next overshield in 30. Last time we saw Splice with that grab earlier, we saw a Tox grab from Frosty. So with this game so close, very good chance that these overshields are really going to determine who can pull away with the lead, who can get a little bit more of an established setup. That overshield pop in 10. Ball coming. Team captain Snake by then trying to move towards his teammate Frosty here. You can see the communication coming in. The the overshield about to pop as well. Renegade's going to be trying to be sneaky around that corner, but Snakebite more than aware. One player who wasn't being sneaky enough was the player who fell straight down in front of him, and that should well be an overshield going yep. into lethal. Great work from Snakebite. Really great work, and one thing I have to point out is Splice is trying to really empl employ the same strategy they use in uh, truth for that camo pickup here on Fissure. They're trying to push way past the overshield to the opponent's front basement door to cut them off. However, Tox was ready for it. They also pick up a very clutch backwhack due to potentially a little bit of miscommunication about that player on the side of Splice. So Tox is still very much alive in this game. Yeah, great shots here from Renegade. Backing players up into the blue lobby, but Lethal comes back off the respawn to finish off the kill. Just seven points between these two teams here, but the couple of kills going out of Tox means that at least Lethal can make some progress off the, up the map. Here comes the push. 
push. They're trying to get control of the oddball, but there's one player who sat on the landing at the moment, and he's managing to slay out so many players from Tox. Frosty tries to milk a little bit of ball time, but that's just going to give complete map control and complete ball control hit to Splice. Yeah, they sent three players there top middle, unaware that Splice had such strong angles and, and different angles on top middle, and all three of those players get taken down. So we're going to see Splice pull away with the lead uh, a little bit here as a, a, an unfortunate sequence of events. Splice was really ready for that top middle push. Yeah, Shots are going to get the play ball here, gets that ball off the map after a fantastic push coming in from Tox, taking down three or four members of his team. Snake right now working with his teammate Royal 2, the second longest lasting duo of all time in Halo, competitive Halo history as well. Lethal with the ball in hand, but Splice with the lead. They need to get a good chunk of ball time here. One dead for each side. Might be a play ball here from Lethal. Great play Quite ball. a nice play ball. As you see, that, that kill might even go, that looks unfinished, but however, still look at 11 a point game, next overshield in 15 seconds. This game has been so quick, and these two teams so close in this game as well. Just 11 points separating the two teams at the moment. Looks like Splice have made the play on the ball. Snakebite's made the decision to drop down bottom middle. As that overshield's just about to pop. Not sure if anyone from Splice is actually in position here. It looks like it's going to be a free overshield. No, Renegade's trying to time it. Doesn't have the perfect time. Frosty takes him down before he can even engage with Snakebite. And now the tools are in the hands of Tox. It's a good power-up pickup there right now. Tox is uh, really playing really well with these power-ups. It's a great double there from Snakebite as well. They have three power-up pickups to only one for Splice. And I want to see him be aggressive here. There's going to be players trying to push towards the plat. He was putting shots down on that player in lobby. He needs to collapse onto the lobby here with TJ. Try and clean up these kills. If he can stay alive for just a second here, wait for the, kill, the help to come around the corner. Snakebite and Lethal work together beautifully to give themselves the lead. Look at that bait and switch, and Snakebite knew the pressure was coming from the second player, so he drops down the lift, comes back up, the help comes in, and not only that, but they also take the lead here for the first time in a while. Next overshield's up in a minute, and my oh my, these two teams so close here, but... Tox looks like a completely different squad here on to in our second best They're seven. really starting to click here, Andy. You can see the teamwork. You can see the baiting and switching. They're almost playing with Splice at this point. It's such a reversal from that first best of seven that we saw. 120 to 96 now. Tox just 30 points away from winning this game. I think at this point, safe to say this is the strongest we've seen Tox play against Splice in a second best of seven in history. They are playing so strong, but of course they have a long way to go if they want to close this out against the best team in the world. And that play might have actually worked out really well there for Tox. I I think that initially he was trying to play the ball, but by slightly delaying it by not quite getting it off the map, at least it's allowed his teammates a few more seconds to maybe come off the respawn and at least get eyes on the on the oddball respawn uh, itself. Another good team shot, and the outslaying has really taken off here. They're outslaying by 63 to 46. Big standout player right now, Snakebite. He's 18 and 10. 18 and 10. Huge performance from him. Trying to find some players here. Has that tack mag as well, and you'll see a lot of DMRs, carbines being used more and more from what we saw in New Orleans, especially cross map and these platform areas, the tap mag as well, obviously so important, drops that player's shield. Snakebite's feeling himself, drops up for the trade. 125 to 96, and again, it's gonna be a battle now for that overshield. Overshield's in about five. It looks like it should be a splice grab unless things go horribly wrong for them. They do have a lot of presence at bottom middle, and I think we're gonna see a stellar grab. Yes, indeed. So that will be the second overshield for them. Let's go to Snakebite's POV. That he actually, he's just gonna be taken down, so stay with Stella, because he saw exactly what was happening there for splice. He might have seen it on a death camp. Two or three players bottom mid. He respawned, tried to milk ball time. Smart thinking there. Now, Stella's going to want to drop that ball as fast as he can because this overshield will be, will be wasted if he just holds the ball with it. He needs to be in engagements. He needs to be challenging his opponents and pushing them back. So that's why you saw him drop the ball right away and let teams push in so he can really take advantage of this power up. Royal 2 is giving him the wiggle at the moment. Royal 2 doing a great job. Lethal comes around the corner to help him out as well. Big kills going down here for Tox. Lethal with the double kill. He's looking for more as well. Royal 2 gets the trade. No play Do ball. they get the play? They don't! No play ball. That ball is still on the map here, so Tox is going to grab. Look at them. Only about 20 points away from winning game number three. They're going to go up 3-0 to zero potentially in the series. If you're just joining us, it's a bracket reset. Splice wiped the floor with Tox in our first best of seven. They just need 10 points now to try and repeat the dosage the other way around. Splice is trying to get into the back of the base as best they can right now, but two players are down for Splice to only Tox is one. But the ball does fall, so not over just yet. Nine points. Lethal has had a monstrous game as far as big plays are concerned as well. He's staying alive so, so well here. Being so, so sneaky. Has a battle with Eco. Wins the big. battle with Eco. 
And if he can wait for his shield, take his time, he could be in a position to potentially win this game. Oh my gosh, look at the damage he's doing here, staying alive. Frosty comes in to clean up those two kills as well. Huge plays from Lethal to stay alive in the back of the base. They might end the game right here. Will 2 gets the ball back to the blue base as well. Splice have to push. Snakebite has the ball in hand. He only needs it for four more seconds. The push is coming in, but it doesn't matter because Tox are one game away from being champions. How things have changed from our first best of seven. This looks awfully similar to New Orleans, but in a little bit of a different way. And by that, I mean completely different with the two teams on the side of the stage. By the way, I got to say, this is a Tox home crowd in London. Not necessarily what I expected, but this crowd is erupting for Tox as they're up three to zero in the series. One game away from dethroning the Halo World Champions. Who would have thunk it? Two very, very different looking teams from what we saw in that first best of seven. That man at the top again, Captain Fantastic Snakebite. Big performance again from him. But looking across the board, one player we have to highlight, Lethal. How many huge plays did he make in that game? I mean, especially staying alive in the back of the base. But also got to point out, Tox 81 kills, Splice only 59. Huge margin there in the slaying category. And they're putting the points where they need to be. He wants weird stat lines that we don't see very often. Renegade, 9 and 24. You can tell that he's just trying to make things happen. 9 and 24. Just trying to fly and make things happen. And, the, and, the, and for the first time, I, I don't know how many times I've said this. This might be the first time I've ever said that Splice is not on the same page. And we don't say that in the grand finals. We really don't see or say that. Amazing stuff from Tox, looking so strong. They look shook. I've got to be honest with you. Look at Renegade right now. I, I think they're a little bit shell-shocked at what's happened. I think... I mean, what we got to talk about go. lethal staying alive in the back of that base. We do. How big that was that? Kill on how Eco, big was it? That kill on Eco, that was an even pistol battle. He wins that 1v1. Not only that, he stays alive to challenge another player. And you saw his teammates come flying in. Frosty finishes those two kills. Splice is a team where if you let them get control in the back of the base at a score of 141 to 126, you're going to lose that game. Splice is going to come back. They're going to rotate on you. They're going to end it right there. But instead of that, we see him pick up that kill. I'm telling you, there's such a good chance that they, they lose that game if Lethal doesn't pick up that kill. A lethal huge play from him. Two or three huge plays yeah. in that game. I mean, the, the bait and switching that with Snake Bite at the top of the lift as well. I mean, Tox, yeah. this is the Tox that we saw for two years dominate absolutely yeah, everything in Halo 5. It, it, I tell you what, it's, it's good to see them performing as well. Uh, they don't have it in the bag yet. Sp we've seen Splice 4 0 many times, but Tox is so different in this second series. This is the great. scary thing, though, Andy. Uh, we know what's going to happen in the next game, right? I, for as bad you know what's going to happen? For as bad as Splice has looked and as good as Tox has looked in this second best of seven, no surprise whatsoever if Splice just turn up in this next oh, game. And I think Tox just knows that. Turn I think things Tox around. I, I, if, if you're in Tox's comms right now, I am sure they're not there. And you saw how they reacted to their first three wins in this series. It, it, it was as if they hadn't even won the game. They know that they have yet to win this tournament. They have yet to be called the champions. They've been here against Splice so many times on these main stages. Let's go ahead and take a look at the maps in this series so far. I'm excited. Look at that game type. Capture the flag on Refuge. Woo. What a game type to have as a potential championship deciding one. Someone is going to make a big play in this game. Will it be the play that elongates this series and gets spliced back into things? Will it be the play that means the Tox are crowned your champions here in London? There's only one way to find out. Let's start this one off with Royal 2. Alrighty, now only one game to go for Tox. If they want to change the course of history, we've seen Splice dominate tournament after tournament. We've seen them raise the Halo World Championship trophy and take away the World Championship title from this oh exact roster. God. Royal 2 heating up early. That is disgusting. Royal 2 just peeling that player off of ring. I barely saw that head. But Royal 2 saw it for long enough to remove it. Flag on the move here early for Tox as well. You can see Snakebite staying alive. The duo working together once again. Somehow Snakebite's still alive. Renegade baiting him out beautifully though with that rocket launcher. Really well done here. And you see, oh boy, Royal 2 just sitting back in his hut and picking up the kills as he needs to. He's gonna wait for his team to push up here and just desperately try to stay alive in his hut if he can. But it looks like that help's not coming anytime soon, so he does the job himself. Do it all yourself. And there's a little tick of one of the armpits there for Stella. Just to remind him who's boss. Who's been doing this longer? And who has more event wins under his belt? And we know Tox is a methodical squad. And if there's any game type you could play a little bit more methodical, 
in Halo 5, it's probably Refuge CTF. This is a game type, we've seen so many iterations of this in Halo, and, and there's kind of some, some unwritten and written rules about pushes you can and can't make. It's not necessarily as fast as other Halo 5 maps, so this really leans itself a bit to the dark side. Yeah, here comes the pressure from Splice, though, and the one thing I am slightly worried about seeing at the start of this game is that Fox are picking up a lot of kills, yes, but there are a lot of them are on their side of the map. You can't give Splice three or four waves of attack because at one point one player is going to get a kill that's going to open things up. And we need to, what we need to see from here Tox is. here is we need to see them playing at the speed that they played the end of the Plaza game. But look at Splice flying in right here. Now they take the lead in the slaying department as they push in. But it's a big stop there from Snakebite. Yeah, it's Eco on the flank as well. If he can pick up a kill here with this sniper rifle, he might have an opportunity to move that flag. But Frosty drops a nuke on him to get that sniper rifle back for himself. Team's tied at 13 in the slaying department now. Uh, Rockets were just up. We'll see exactly where those went. In the hands of Shotzi, unsurprisingly, he loves to have these things in ring and puts them to use with a double. One Rocket left as well. Yeah, you can see he's spotting another player out here. It's Frosty. He's trying to be aggressive with the sniper rifle. Frosty no-scopes. Stellar, I believe, as well. But Shotzi, I mean, we call that one a no-scope. It's close enough, wasn't it? I think so, but now look at this. Not afraid to fly out as Frosty. Not only does he pick up that first no-scope, picks up a second kill, and then flies into the hut. When you have a player like Shotzi flying at you, he counters that, flies right at him in the court and picks up that kill. So we're still seeing some great aggression from Tox that I don't think we saw at all in the first series. Yeah, belief can be a wonderful thing for a Halo team. Now it's Blyce having to play defensively on their side of the map, trying to clean up some kills. You see the ghost of a Tox player there at the top of the ring area. Renegade trying to stay alive. He's not sure where that. anyone is at the moment. Tox doing a great job of just making sure they're staying alive. I mean, it's so rare that you see Splice unable to finish kills in those types of scenarios where you see Renegade spinning around, unsure of where his opponent is, even though he's weak. We never see that Splice is always on the same page when we hear those listen-ins. It's so cool, Common Collective. You could bet it's quite oh, the oh, opposite. Oh. Renegade taking a face there. Renegade taking a face, but again, on his side of the map, Tox won't mind if they die on the, on the opposition side of the map, on the Splice side of the map. They're always going to be respawning. They're always going to be able to push up once again and try. Stella picks up a kill here. There's a player pushing in the rocks here for Tox as well. It looks like Stella versus Snakebite, but Frosty's going to come in, make that battle a little bit uncomfortable. Now Renegade's having to back down. And Splice, I tell you what, you can tell they're not used to this kind of pressure. Not only in this game, but every game in this second best of seven here, uh, not used to playing uh, with this much pressure from Tox. And, and it, what a surprise it is. After you saw those first four games from Tox, I don't think any of us expected to see this level of pressure, but they have certainly brought it in the second best of seven. Ross, Frosty's still sitting here on the car. If Frosty can hit some shots here, this could be a flag cap here for Tox. Two kills have gone down. He could clean another one up here. He does. Frosty finds two. The flag is moving across, and all of Splice are caught on respawn. And look at the ammo in that sniper rifle as well. He needs to stay alive here. They're about to bring this flag and continue that run. It's going now this to is the a cap. This is definitely going to be a cap as we see this first one brought in right after this flag goes in, though. Let's get into a listen in here as Tox is only two caps away from winning this tournament. Three, two, three, three, three. three shots. Two shots in, two shots in. Nice. Good trade. Good trade. One yeah, rocket yeah, yeah. down. One rocket down. One 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 down. I'm getting ring three, I'm getting ring three. They're bonding ring one. They're, they're bond, one shot. One shot, one shot. Two dead, two dead. Two dead. Two dead. Getting shots. Yo, there's the quarter. One second, one second. Cheat the court, cheat the court, doing nothing, cheat the court, doing nothing. Yo, I'm flaky, pull some. Just trying to live. Nice. Worry about pulling. They're shotty, they're shotty. left, man, to your left, to your left. Stick them, stick them. Wow, I got two dead, two dead. They're bond, they're bond, PJ, they're bond. They're bond in the middle. Back rocks, back rocks. Matt, watch that guy. He's shooting you from rocks. They're bond ring one. Oh, he's going to jump, he's going to jump, jump. Yeah. Airjump, I'm going to be out here. Uh, the carbine, the carbine poking out my head. Carbine He's our court, Renegade. Another one in ring. Mel. Two in car again, two Stellar. Two in ring, two in ring. One in ring. Right, yeah. I don't, uh, ring three. Renegade, yeah. Renegade's two, it's ring three. And their car, Stellar. I'm challenging him. I, he's, I hit him three, three times. Three, I cannot see him. He's, he's above our jump, absolutely. Uh, I got eat, guys. I'm mid-rock to us, I'm mid-rock to us. Nice help, guys. Two dead. They're wall, they're wall to us. Yeah, and Stellar's weak their jump. I saw two shots, two shots of jump. Guys go in their hut. He's our street, our street, our street, our ring three. Yep. So it's got one in ring. I I spawn rocks. Yeah, yeah maybe. I spawn our ball. Two dead again. Yo, they're, they're back. They're mid rock. They're mid rock. They're rocking. They're rocking. I'm pushing right. Once they're I'm saying lab. I'm saying lab. Yo, they're rocking. Do you want me to go? Renegades. Renegades. Maybe kill him. Hold on. I'm one hit. I'm one hit. I'm one hit. I hit him with an 80. He's one hit. I got him. I got him. I'm pushing dead. Two dead. Health. Health. Rock. I'm looking. Looking. Come on. Come on. Come on. In the turret. In the turret. Three dead. Three dead. Three dead. He's under turret. I hit him once. Go fast. Go fast. One shot turret. Yeah. Got him. Pick up. Pick up. Are you down? One, two, three. They're bombing. They're jump. Are jump. Are jump. One hit, Brad. Is one shot Shazzy? Yeah, two on me. Jump guy dead. No one. Our jump. Huge stuff from Tox, and this man on your screen right now is the most aggressive player for Tox. He is doing everything. He's getting in the base, he's picking up kills, and right now he's putting the second flag cap in that moves them just one cap away from being your London champions. And not just that, only one cap away from 4 owing Splice in a second best of seven here. The pressure is Royal coming. freaking two! 
with the no scope. What a shot again. He is doing everything in this last game. My oh my, are they answering back here? You and I looked at it during the listening. Tox is playing so much faster than we've seen them play. They're flying into the rocks, clearing out opponents. World 2 is leading those charges, and they look so strong here in game number four. Stellar, I mean, he's got to feel shell shocked right now. All of Splice, I'm not sure that they know what's happening because this is a different animal that's coming in at them right now at Tox 2 to 0. Splice have no mistakes left in the series. They have no mistakes left in this game as Frosty once again removes a player from the map for a few moments. That was three dead momentarily again, so the, con the control and the aggression continues from Tox. Look at the shots that we see Frosty hitting there. Fadeaway jumper. Frosty is just an animal when he heats up. You can see the confidence just lining up no scopes. Only has one bullet left in the chamber. Odds on he hits this one, Andy. Uh, I, I'm, at this point, I'm, I think I'm going to bet on Frosty every time. Also, they're out slaying Splice by 20. It's 63 to 43 in the slaying category. Only four and a half minutes or so left in this game. And if Tox just continues playing this game, they're going to win this tournament. Renegade pushes up. Works with Eco to finish off the kill on Royal 2. Going to be pushing aggressively, and now there is a good push finally coming in from Splice here. They're picking up kills on the top side of the map. There is a real opening for them to maybe run a flag of their own. Next uh, rocket launcher going to be in about 24 seconds as well. And at this pace, we are going to see that rocket launcher come into play and potentially be a, a big factor in this next flag run. Great shots here from Renegade. Oh, finally gets the kill onto Royal 2 as well. Frosty trades out a kill. Eco picks up another one. If he can pick up a kill here, there is a big opportunity to run a flag. Frosty is 24 and 8 in this game right now. Oh my 24 word. and 8. Triple positive. Bradley Bergstrom is having a monster game number four here for Tox. Stellar and Eco, though. They're good friends are trying to stop the momentum as Renegade moves this flag back across. If he can get around this corner, this could well be a cap here. Keep an eye on that kill feed, though. They have to pick up a couple of kills. Looks like not too many players in position, and by not too many, I mean nobody in position to get this stop. A little bit of a fumble, but I don't think it's going to stop them. I, I'm not kidding when I say no one's there to stop. So now 2-1 to one in favor of Tox. You have to wonder if they applied a little bit more pressure if they could have gotten that stop, but I have to agree, you don't want to risk giving up this game. They have a, they still have a one-point cushion. They can hold on to that. They've dominated in slaying, 71 to 57 still. So lots to play for here, only three and a half left. Rocket's going to be popping up. Pretty soon, this is one of those sniper rifles. You can see Snakebite. He's moving towards the splice side of the map here. This is a smart play from Snakebite. Not only is he in position where he could possibly steal away that sniper rifle, he could also potentially get a kill, but he's got to get the stop. He's had to make this. He's had to make a decision to rotate back. He gets one kill on Shotzi. Looks for a second. Oh, Stella manages to finish it though. I think the, I was going to say I think there's going to be help here from the talk side. I don't think we're going to see this run continue. Frosty also did grab the snipe for his oh, side Frosty. as well as he picks up that kill. Oh my word! Frosty has just dropped two shields after getting that initial kill on the map. He's just stopped all of the momentum there in three bullets what, worth of sniper. What a play and a decision from Snakebite. He bails on the opponent's sniper. He could have been a little bit greedy and waited for that sniper rifle, but he flies back into his rocks, picks up a kill on the flag carrier, and oh then also my. kills another player. Oh, Look at this Frosty, Frosty with a double. Stella put on his back. Tox being put on his back at the moment. Frosty has stepped up massively in this game number four. Are you kidding me? Oh, Look at this. Shossy. Welcome to Frosty Town. Things have changed on set. Things have changed. <sighs> I don't think the shots he wanted to be a snowman, but he's just become one and he's become one once more. Killing spree here for Frosty. It's just fish in a barrel for him right now. Two minutes here for Tox to hold on in order to become your champion. Amazing slaying from Frosty. He's going to lead to a rocket grab for Snakebite. Probably just going to stay alive here, pick up these kills. And this is what you want to see if you're a Tox fan. They just need to play out the rest of these two minutes here, and they'll be able to close it out. And with the way that Frosty's slaying here, uh, he looks unstoppable. Now up on top, ring three with Sniper Rifle as well. He is 30 and 11 in 30 this game. Make that 31 and 11. And 11. Players on his radar. Frosty says, bring it on. He's just waiting for anyone to dare challenge him, to have the nerve to challenge him. As they're trying to move in a third and final cap. Frosty spots one player, cleans up the kill on Stella, looks for the second, he finds that as well, drops down, gets the flag touch, and manages to get it to his courtyard. That was too dead for both sides. Curious if we're going to see Tox continue that run to try to end it here. Looks like Snakebite here is going to answer Snakebite our question, Bite yes. Picks up that flag, the kills are being picked up as well. Too the dead. arena here in London is Three going dead. wild. Frosty with the final kill. Tox have done it. Champions of London, once again.
It's been a long, long road to this point. They've lost a lot of tournaments to Splice. But here they are, 4 0 them in a second best of seven. Unbelievable stuff. Splice.